What's happening everybody? I got a comparison video for you today. I'm gonna to show you two bikes, two bikes I really like. First one is the Cyrusher Komoda bike. And the second one we're gonna look at is gonna be the Magic Cycle Ocelot Pro. I like both of these bikes for one big reason, and that is that they are both very accessible bikes. I can ride these comfortably at six feet tall. My wife can ride them very comfortably at five foot three. These are both great bikes for short riders. I think they're both worth a look if you're e-bike shopping. And I'm gonna show you both up close and kind of compare them back and forth, point out some of the main differences and also some of the things I think you should be aware of about each bike and maybe help you decide if one of them is the bike you wanna buy. I know it's a tough choice right now. There's a lot of options out there, but let's take a look at these two up close. All right, well, first let me say thank you for checking out this video. Everyone continuing to watch my channel is what allows me to have access to all these different e-bikes and put this information out there. So I feel very appreciative, very thankful, and uh, very fortunate to have this opportunity. So thank you for your continued support. But let's go through these bikes a little bit now. And I'm not gonna get too uh, formal and technical with everything. I just Let's just have a conversation about these bikes. And the first thing I wanna say is that neither one is really in their stock form. I've made changes to both of these bikes to make them better. Let's start with the Komoda bike, Cyrusher Komoda, and the changes I've made to this bike so far are I added a stem riser right here to lift the handlebars up about maybe three, three and a half inches. I changed the seat. I added this really soft, pillowy, spring-loaded bikeroo seat. And I also, I put this cup holder on, it's really easily removed. But the other major change I did was the shock. I found the stock shock to be a little soft so i put on this dnm adjustable shock which i find to be much better of course links to all this stuff will be below don't worry i'll put all those in there and i think that's really the only changes i've made so far on the komoda over here on the ocelot pro bike the changes i've made are i uh, added this headlight i put on a larger headlight i had this one laying around and it was much larger than the stock one so i changed the headlight i put on a shorter front fender i like short fenders I added the mirrors. I again added a stem riser right here to lift the handlebars up a good couple inches. And I put on a suspension seat post, cheap one, Zoom, I think it's like 30 bucks. And also, again, the Bikeroo pillow top spring loaded seat to give it a little bit cushier ride. And of course, the spoke skins, that's, that's how these are white. The spokes are not painted. Those are spoke skins, they're little plastic tubes that you put on the spokes. They're a pain in the butt to put on there, but they really add to the look of the bike, I think. So now that you know the changes that I've made to these bikes from their stock form, let's just start going back and forth through them a little bit and talk about a few of the differences. They both have hydraulic brakes. Um, they're both 180 millimeter disc brakes on each bike. The Ocelot has Tektro brakes, whereas the Komoda has Zoom brakes. They both work pretty well. I don't really notice a major difference in the braking power. The Komoda comes with the Chaoyang tires on there, and the Ocelot has the Kenda Crusade tires, which is a little bit more aggressive of a tread pattern. I would say that both of these tires are equally as loud. These fat tire bikes can be kind of loud on the road. They're about the same level of noise, and I, I mean, give them the choice. I think I like the, the Crusade a little bit better. I like the more aggressive tread pattern. I would say that the Cyrusher Komoda is probably the flashier of the two bikes with the colors. Cyrusher offers a lot of different colors. I think you can get like red, blue, yellow, maybe even green on this uh, Komoda bike. So it's a little bit brighter, flashier. It's more eye-catching, especially with the frame design and the full suspension there. Tried to dress this one up a little bit with the spoke skins to make it a little bit louder. But this Ocelot bike, I think only comes in white and gray. So there's not really any loud color options for this one. They both come standard with rear rack and fenders. The Cyrusha Komoda fender, I really like because I like the short fenders like this that don't wrap around and have the wire that connects. The Ocelot actually came with that style of fender and I removed it. It came with the longer wrap around fender with the uh, wire piece that connects and I, I actually put this is a Komoda fender I contacted Cyrusher and had them sell uh, sell me a couple extra of these shorty fenders which I've added to multiple bikes so this is not the stock fender although it does come with fenders I just prefer the shorter one both bikes have a front suspension you can see the one on the Ocelot's a little bit shorter it's kind of your standard bike suspension and the one on the Komoda is more they call it motorcycle inspired some people say double crown 
uh, but they're much taller you know they don't stop right here they come all the way up to the handlebars it does give it a really cool look it looks more motorcyclish and although it looks cool it does have one drawback to it and that is there's no way to put a front basket right here they don't you can see they don't have any mounting hardware here for a front basket where the oscillate bike does have that and they sell an aftermarket front basket you can add to the bike so if you're looking for a lot of cargo carrying capacity oscillates can be a better option there because you can add the front basket you could put one on here i guess if you had one that maybe attached to the handlebars but there's no brackets here to mount anything both bikes do have a complete lighting package they come with headlights taillights and brake lights so they both have functioning brake lights as far as the controls i mean we can start with oscillate they each have rubber grips on them with the palm rest these are they they stay pretty good i mean they don't spin too much in your hand however the ones on the komodo are locking grips so i'll show you in a second but these are good i'm probably not going to change these out i don't mind those at all twist throttle on the oscillate seven speed shifter color display here i'll turn it on so you can see what it looks like um, and on this side of your control plane, panel just over here and i've added bar and mirrors i try to add bar and mirrors to almost every bike that's what the display looks like it's not crazy readable in the direct sunlight but it's it's fine i don't mind the screen at all i've actually put this specific screen on other bikes because i do like it it allows you to go in here and adjust all the pedal assist levels and the amount of power delivered in each level it's fantastic for programming you can set this bike up with the pedal assist however you want and really fine tune the power delivery i do like that a lot about this oscillate bike if we come over here and take a look at what's happening on the Cyrusher bike I'll turn on this one so you can see what this display looks like this one's a little bit brighter again full color display this one's probably easier to read in the direct sunlight um, you have your rubber grips these are have the locking rings on them though so these stay firmly planted exactly where you put them i like these grips a lot half twist throttle the seven speed shifter your button cluster over here they have a one touch headlight and a horn added to the cluster on the oscillate bike you just have to hold the up arrow and that'll turn your headlight on but this uh, display screen is nice looking it doesn't have all the programmability in it that the oscillate does though you cannot adjust you know the amount of power in each pedal assist level so not as programmable but still a good looking display so if you're looking for that programmability the oscillate bike is going to be the bike you want another thing i want to point out which i think people don't realize a lot of times is on the cyrusher bike the throttle is connected to your pedal assist level so when you're in pedal assist level one you get level one power in the throttle bump it up to two you get level two power so you don't get full power out of the throttle until you're in pedal assist five which is different than how the oscillate bike functions with this bike it doesn't matter what pedal assist level you're in the throttle is always full throttle you can get the max power out of the throttle at all times it doesn't it's not connected to that pedal assist number i like this setup better you know but this is not a big deal i have a bunch of bikes that are set up like this cyrus here where you know they're connected you just end up hitting the pedal assist buttons more often as you need more power in the throttle and you, you get used to it it's, it's not a huge deal but an in interesting quirk that i wanted to point out between the two now let's talk about differences in the battery so there's a couple things to point out here the cyrus or komoda has a 14 amp hour battery pack 48 volt 14 amp hours and it loads in from you know the top right the oscillate bike has a 52 volt battery 20 amp hours much larger battery pack and this one loads in from the bottom so i like the higher voltage and the higher capacity on the oscillate bike but i like i don't like that it loads in the front it's just a little bit cumbersome getting it out here with the fender and the wheel it's not my favorite style of battery you know coming out the front like that i prefer it coming out the back but i mean it's hard to argue with the higher voltage and the bigger much larger capacity in the battery in this bike as far as the range comparison i did do a range test on the komoda i have not done one on the oscillate bike i think i got somewhere over 20 miles throttle only 
on this Komoda. Um, and I would guess that this bike would go farther. However, having access, it's a much more powerful bike. So having access to all that power, you might chew through this battery quicker and you might end up being closer in range than you think because you're gonna be burning through the power on this oscillate bike more, you know, faster. For the frame designs, you can see that they are both step through e-bikes. You know, they do not have the top bar here. I think that's great for accessibility for shorter riders, older riders. I'll put the step through heights on the screen. I feel the Komoda is probably gonna be a little bit shorter of a step through height, maybe a little wider step through as well. But I don't mind either design of the frame. They both look pretty sharp. I will say that there's one big thing about the frame design that may make or break your decision. And that's the dual suspension on the Komoda, which is fantastic. It is riding on a cloud. <laughs> it is very nice ride on the Komoda. I changed this shock out. The original one was very soft and I put in this adjustable shock and it's still, it's a dream to ride this bike. It absorbs the bumps very nicely. This bike, I have, uh, I've tried to mimic the Komoda as best I could. I put in the suspension seat post and the softer seat. I also, oh, I forgot to mention, I did put the Tannis armor, you know, the foam inserts inside the tires on this bike to try to make it have a better ride quality. And the ride quality on this Oscillate is, is great now. It's better than it was stock, having the foam in the tires, suspension post and seat. But it is not, it's not on this level. It's, you just can't match the dual suspension on the Komoda bike. I did my best, I tried to make this thing as cushy as the Komoda, but it's, it's very nice. It's a very nice ride that wouldn't keep me from buying this at all, uh, but you cannot, I have not been able to mimic or match the dual suspension on the Komoda. So that has been one of the biggest things about this Komoda bike that I like, the dual suspension, such a great ride. When my father was in town last time, I had him ride six different 20 by four fat tire bikes. I did not have the Oscillate at the time, so he never rode this, but in uh, his ride of all six of those bikes, you can watch the video, he chose the Komoda as his favorite just because of the ride quality that it was flashy looking and had the cargo capacity on the rear rack he he really likes the cyrusher bikes because they're so eye-catching but that's what i'm going to say is the biggest benefit of the komoda is the dual suspension it makes the ride quality really nice you can mimic it to an extent on other bikes without rear suspension but it's never going to be the same both bikes are seven speeds they both have an adequate front chain ring. I believe the Komodas might be slightly larger, a couple more teeth in there. I didn't really notice a problem with ghost pedaling either. Of course, you're going at very high speeds. You're going to end up ghost pedaling, pedaling a little bit, but you know, these are both a decent size where it wasn't a, a major problem. So I wouldn't worry about the gearing. You can also change that to aftermarket if you really need to. Another curious thing that I've noticed about these bikes, and I haven't quite been able to figure it out, is that on the Komoda bike, when the pedal is in a downstroke like that, I get a fair amount of pedal strikes on the ground. And I took some measurements. The Oscillate bike, I mean, the pedal seems the same or lower even to the ground, but I don't really notice any pedal strikes riding this bike. I, I can't figure out why. If it's has something to do with when the rear suspension compresses and the pedal gets lower to the ground, but never fails. Every time I go out and ride the Komoda, I, I hit the pedal on a curb or the ground if I'm taking a sharp turn. I seem to always get a pedal strike. I have not noticed that happening on the Oscillate. So maybe somebody can educate me in the comments. Um, that would be my guess. Maybe it's the compression of the rear suspension moving the pedal closer to the ground at points where it, it ends up hitting. I don't know, but I notice pedal strikes on the Komoda. I don't on the Oscillate. Weird, weird scenario, don't know why. Both of these bikes come standard with a rear rack. The Komoda bike rack is huge though. I haven't really been able to find a bag that fits nicely on there. It's extra wide. I can put dimensions on the screen, but it's a much larger rear rack on the Komoda. Would allow you to put a much larger bag on there, I guess. This one comes with its own little rubber strap here to hold things on. For the motors, they are both a 750 watt rear hub motor, but the power is pretty different. 
Um, I mean, the this, this Cyrusha Komoda has good power. I didn't really feel it was lacking. Um, you just have to constantly play with the pedal assist buttons, you know, bumping it up one through five to get the right amount of power out of the throttle. Uh, I wouldn't say it was slow or, you know, a dog or anything like that. It, was, it had good power, but the Ocelot just had so much more power. Maybe because of the 52 volt system, they are probably different brands of motors as well, but this bike is more powerful, is a lot faster. Um, I can put all the top speeds and everything on the screen. I think the Komodo was in the 26, 27 maybe mark. I think the, the Ocelot was over 30 for top speed. The Ocelot just feels like a much more powerful bike, even on the hill climb. I remember it climbed the hill, I think a lot faster. It was one of the fastest bikes up the hill. I think it might've, might have had the new record <laughs> on the hill climb I do. It was faster than the Cyrusher. Cyrusher has good power. I wouldn't let that turn you off from the bike, but this one does have more. Ocelot does have more hill climb power and top speed power. There is one other weird thing about the Ocelot though that I do not like, and that is the cruise control. When you are rolling down the road and you got your hand on the throttle and you hold this throttle in place for whatever it is, five seconds, eight seconds, I can't remember how long, but it, it's a, it locks, it automatically locks the throttle. So it has automatic cruise. I don't know why company, I've seen this on multiple bikes now. Why, <laughs> why would you automatically lock your throttle? It blows my mind. I do not like that feature. I have not been able to find a way to turn it off. I did ask them. I believe there is no way to turn it off. I think they're gonna add that in the future, I hope, a way to disable that. Uh, it, it's not a major deal. Once you know it's there, the first time I rode it, I didn't know that that was there. So all of a sudden, you know, I released the throttle and I just kept going. So it does have automatic cruise control that kicks in after you know five seconds of holding the throttle wide open or however long it is. I, I'm not a fan of that feature. Maybe some people would like it. It's not a big deal to turn it off. You just have to remember when you release the throttle, just kind of tap the brake lever at the same time and you know, your cruise won't kick on. They all have their little little things like that, but that's why I do these videos to point that out to you so you're aware of it. But both of these bikes are good options. I like to see bikes like this in the market, which are smaller and easier to manage. I think that's where a lot of people get tripped up is they're looking at the 26 by four fat tire bikes. And then when they order one and it shows up, it's far larger than they expected. It's harder to get off and on. These are smaller. They are easier to handle. They're easier to get off and on. And they're more accessible for more people to ride. I'll throw up some video of me getting on each of these bikes. I'm six feet tall and I can ride both of these very comfortably, but more importantly, folks that are closer to the five foot mark are able to ride these bikes very comfortably as well. My wife has been taking out the Cyrus or Komoda a lot lately. Uh, it's just, I have it hanging on the rack up here and it's just easily to, more easily accessible to get it down than her bike over here, which is tucked behind the motorcycle. <laughs> So I've been trying to clear out space in the garage so I can get all these off the wall uh, easily, but hers is always kind of blocked a little bit. So I've been having her go on the, the side rusher and she likes it. She likes the ride quality. She, every time she gets on it, she says, oh my gosh, it's just so soft. Is it the seat that's soft? And I keep saying, nah, I think it's probably more the suspension. She rides a rad mini normally, but I think this one's growing on her a lot. But I like having bikes like this around in the garage so when friends and family come over, you know, people can get on these. It's hard to get on some of the larger bikes if you're short. So there you go. There's a little bit about each bike. I hope you found that helpful. I think some of the key points here are, you know, of course the dual suspension and uh, the flashier looks with the colors and the motorcycle style front forks. Still good power in this bike, very comfortable ride. This one, you've got a little bit more speed, a little bit more power, larger battery capacity. It doesn't have the same exact ride quality as the Komoda, but both very good options. They are similar in price. I think the Komoda's a little bit more, but once you factor in all the stuff I added to this Ocelot bike to try to make the ride quality equivalent, you probably at almost the same exact price point. So I'll leave it up to you to decide if one of these bikes might fit your needs. If you have questions about either, uh, definitely throw it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer if I can. And I hope you found this video helpful informative, maybe at least entertaining. If you did, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'll talk to y'all later. Thank you.